let us stop wasting our time. You cannot dialogue with yourself. You cannot dialogue with someone who does not want any dialogue. You cannot talk to somebody who says you are a slave. And if you say you want to go, I will injure you. I will not let you go because I control the military. I control the, the, the police. That is the problem. So what you are doing now is just, you are just scratching it on the surface. There are fundamental issues to be addressed. I am not going to participate in a dialogue or conversation that I know will lead nowhere. These people have made up their minds. They are not stupid. They know what they are doing. They've planned it over time. And they've decided that you and I have no right to challenge it. And so, and unfortunately, you also have leaders in the southwest, in the southeast, in the south south, in the north central, and all across Nigeria, you have leaders who are chicken at it. I read a region of Nigeria over the weekend that they formed a security committee. And what is the agenda of the security committee? I thought they would say, oh, we are going to go after bandits, we are going to go after terrorists, we are going to go after invaders, we are going to go after... Do you understand? No, but it's obvious that they are forming their security probably to fight some people who are agitating for freedom within their zone. It doesn't make sense to me. You understand? You are not facing your oppressors. You are facing your own local people, your own citizens, who are demanding as a matter of legitimate right to say, look, we want freedom of association. We want to determine who we want to associate with. That is what I'm seeing. A governor came out and said he ordered the army to go and crush some of his own people. So how come the people of Sanfara, the people of Niger, where people are being kidnapped daily, they are not responding in that manner? What's, what is wrong with us in the South? I'm not saying fight government. I am saying fight whosoever makes life difficult for you. I'm not saying go and fight government. But where you now have people who are now saying eh, we have formed our security thing and we're very loyal to the federal government of Nigeria. If the federal government of Nigeria provided security, will you be forming your own security in the first instance? So, <laughs> so for me, let me tell you, <laughs> it, it, it has become a big joke. But what I know is that a day will be a day when the monkey will go to the market and it will be a different story. There is, I have no doubt. History has taught me. Let me tell you, what shall it profit a leader if under his watch everything falls apart? I don't know what any leader will so that in the future they will say, yes, you champion the cause of your people. Is that all there is to life? A good leader should be a global statesman. When you mention Nelson Mandela, when you mention Moshud Abiola, when you mention Mwalimu Julius Nyerere, when you mention Tomo Kenyatta, when you mention Pandit Nehru, when you mention all these great people, when you mention Mother Teresa, when you mention Prophet Muhammad, when you mention Jesus Christ, when you mention Buddha, all of them at different times in their history, they did something that the world is celebrating today. So why are our only that so myopic? Why are they so unambitious? Why are they so visionless that they cannot see the bigger picture? It is well. But you have yet to answer my question, sir. If we are to achieve this split of Nigeria, this division of Nigeria, would it be a regional uh, separation? Would it be individual states? If, let's just say, hypothetically, we are able to address uh, the federal government of Nigeria today, 
or United Nations or African Union and, and we are able to get attention to say, okay, we want to go. What would we put forward? A regional division, a uh, confederation, or what would you prefer as a solution, sir? Personally, I don't like to talk loosely or make wild generalizations. There are different options now available to Nigerians and only Nigerians themselves can come together and determine. For example, when I interviewed Mazin and Bikanu last year, he spoke about a referendum that we should have, and I think that sounds very reasonable. Most countries that have gone through what we are going through right now went through that process and procedure. And I expect that Nigerians themselves will have to decide. There are those who don't even want to have anything to do with the union called Nigeria because they believe that it was forced together by the British in those days. Yes, that's and that, the view. But and, they are, and that they are tired of it. Uh, I've had meetings yes, with different groups. People consult me. People talk to us from time to time, even the late Nika Dumakin, myself, Aki Oshutokun, and a few others. We meet with different governments who want our views. And my, my problem is the fact that it is almost impossible to separate under the present configuration without a war. That is my fear. And so that is why I am hoping that people would not throw the baby away with the bath water by saying what Kanu is saying is uh, crazy. Because Kanu is still talking about a process that is peaceful by talking of a referendum. You know, I mean, you were part of Brexit in London. I was one of those who said Brexit was impossible, that it will not happen. But before our very eyes, it happened. They pulled out. So let people vote for where they want to belong. That shouldn't be a problem. But where you now refuse and say they cannot go away, even, I mean, you, I'm sure you heard of a book. It was a very popular title when we were going up, Let My People Go. I think it was by Albert Lutuli. Albert Lutuli. You know, during the apartheid regime and all that. He said, let my people go. You know, people should have the freedom to determine, especially in a marriage, if you don't like your wife, okay, you are tired of, of your wife, and it's obvious that you have no respect whatsoever for your wife, and then you say she cannot go away. I mean, what common sense do you see in that? You are saying you don't you don't agree, you don't have anything in you common. You don't want her and you don't want her to go. You don't want her and you don't want her to go. You want her to remain your slave. You want her to still be cooking for you, which is what is happening now. How do you take money from the South-South and you say you are bringing a trade from Nigeria to Niger Republic? What sense is in that? How many people travel from Nigeria to Niger Republic. In fact, more people travel from Nigeria through Badagri. You have a federal road there that links up to the Ecowas Road from Semen through Kotonou, through Ilakoji. So you either go towards Lume in Togo or you go to Côte d'Ivoire when you turn right. We have not built anything in that direction. You have seaports in Lume, you have in Tema, in Ghana, you have in Kotonou, and you don't think it is better for you to invest money in that direction, but you will rather invest money towards Niger Republic. These are the things that are provoking people. Then the Niger Delta, where the bulk of the money is coming from, you are not doing anything. The place is polluted, the place is destroyed, the people are living in misery. You have not done anything for them, and you think, yeah, you can just come grab. Now someone said they want to build the biggest 
gas plant in Meduguri, you are not building it where the gas is. So you are going to build the biggest gas plant in Africa and you will now take it with pipes from <laughs> where to where, from the Niger Delta all the way. So these are issues that, and we are appealing to those we know, we are talking to them, but it seems they are also powerless. They are powerless. So, and I don't know what drives people to think that they can force others to follow them sheepishly. So that is why I cannot tell you one thing that I want. Nigerians are the ones who will determine what they want. And I have only one vote in the referendum, only one vote. Left to me alone, I would have preferred a larger Nigeria. But the way it is going now, it's becoming more attractive. In fact, it's like Buari is helping the proponents, okay, of a of the, many nations out of Nigeria, let me put it that way. It's like the one even driving them and helping them, you know, to solidify their action. There were people, oh, yes. I have a sister-in-law, very, very intelligent woman, very brilliant, she's a lawyer, a die-hard Buhari fanatic. If you speak to her today, you will not believe it's the same person. Two years ago, this woman, Buhari would not do anything wrong. So, but because of this intransigence on the part of the Buhari government, thinking that there is nothing anybody can do, we're in power. So a lot of people who ordinarily will not support those who want to break away. Suddenly, I'm hearing of Udua Nation, Yoruba Nation, Biafra, this and that, and you can't blame them. Okay, sir. Uh, just two final questions. I would like to reflect on my previous interviewees who have said that the government has been able to uh, get away with immunity because the Nigerian masters as a whole are not reacting to things they're supposed to react to. That they're not. Uh, it's just a few individuals here and there who speak and then they're intimidated to keep quiet. And we the people in the voice of God that if Nigerians in mass were in mass were awake and stood against this decision, um, that there would be a change. For example, this rail um, from from down to Niger Republic, a lot of uh, my interviewees are referring that it's a waste of resources. It has no economical value uh, in Nigeria. Um, it's not. Uh, it's not even one of the routes to consider. Uh, so why is that? Why are billions being sunk into such a wasteful project? And then masters, uh, if we're, we're looking at the young people and, and, and uh, a huge percentage of the population are not even reacting to this news. And that person is saying that this is because Nigerians as a whole choose to ignore situations and they keep tolerating and tolerating and the government continue to act with impunity. Do you think that this is the case? Because you said that um, this um, leaders are not listening. But do you think that because the volume is not loud enough? Definitely the volume is not loud enough. Don't forget that the lives of majority of Nigerian business people depend on government. The government of Nigeria, that's why the president of Nigeria is so powerful, he can almost talk, turn a man into a woman and a woman into a man. You can wake up a certified pauper and by afternoon you are a certificated billionaire. Just stroke of a pen from the president, your life can change within a twinkle of an eye. So that is the problem. So an average Nigerian depends on government. So everybody is afraid. If I, sometimes the way I describe it, there is only foolish people like myself who criticize government in Nigeria because what it means is that you are going to lose government patronage. And that's why it's painful sometimes when you see your fellow citizens who should appreciate that you are putting everything at a risk. Most people don't realize that the greatest radicals on earth are those who have something to lose, and yet they put it at risk. A radical is not a poor man. They say a man who is down fears no fall. A radical is, a, is an abiola who had everything to lose and chose to spend four years of his life in prison till he died. That, for me, is a radical. 
So a lot of people in Nigeria are not ready to make the I see people today say, oh if I be allowed if he didn't fight government, oh he will be alive today. I say so he will be alive a useless man when he sees what is wrong in his country and he's not able to speak, then he dies of headache or stomach ache. Is that a worthy life? And I tell them Abiola died a good death. Abiola today will be remembered forever. Kudirat Abiola will be remembered forever. There is no country in the world that has made it where some people did not have to make sacrifice. Why is our own different? Why is everybody thinking it will happen by sitting down in the comfort of your homes or by going to church and praying like praying mantis? No. Nigerians must speak up. It does not cost you a dime to speak up. In fact, now you are even lucky, unlike our time when you used to face the military on the street. Now you can sit in your home and reach millions of people. As we are talking now, people are watching us. I, 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 I hooked up on Facebook. As we are speaking now, we have 1.1k people. Over 1,000 people, as I'm talking to you now. Watch it on Facebook. So people are watching. People will watch it on YouTube. They watch it all over the world. So don't speak up. Let people know. If our important people, all the artists who control millions of followership, if they decide to, they don't even need to go to Lekki like Toll Gate before people will feel their hyper. But you think only a few people should work. Should work as his business, should work and sit in America, not come to Nigeria. But he chose to come home. And yet you will still find people who are abusing what is wrong with him. I said, look, if you can't praise him, I'm not saying you should praise anybody, please tolerate everybody. Anybody who is doing something, no matter how little, let us appreciate them. But rather we are fighting amongst ourselves, oh, who is Shogure, who is Dilebo Modu, who is Mogadu, who is Feladro to it. That is not going to solve our problem. Our problems will be solved when we all realize that we have a big problem at hand and trust me it is not impossible to whip this government into line without firing a bullet we will use our intelligence we will use our brains nigerians are among the most brilliant human beings on earth we're not going to allow anybody to reduce us to a country of cows it's not going to happen look at how many nigerians you have in the cabinet of joe biden today and then we are still talking about cows Look at what happened in Ghana today. I just read on Twitter that Twitter now is having its headquarters, its African headquarters in Ghana. A population of maybe less than 30 million. But because Ghana has built a good image for itself. Anytime you read anything about Nigeria now, it's about cows, it's about banditry, it's about kidnapping, it's about... So who wants to bring a business to... So, correct. And you are now talking to me uh, that uh, unity. It's not about... The problem is not unity. I don't have any problem with you. Some of my best friends are there. I have a friend in, in who, who is from Northeast. You, you understand? Hawao Tuko, his father used to be a PDP chairman. And I give Amanda Tuko's son. When I was contesting, I wanted him to be my running mate. Now we have Nasi Rufai in Kaduna, brilliant, very cerebral, but I don't know what happened in politics every day now in Kaduna is about banditry. How do you run a nation where you don't even know what is going to happen between tonight and tomorrow morning? And we're advising government, and government says no. And once you advise government, then you are an enemy of government. I'm not an enemy of anybody. I don't want this to go on forever, but unfortunately, it seems these people have made up their minds that everything must fall apart. Unfortunately, the great writer Chino Achebe is no more. In many words, sir, in many words, you have explained our position. You and I, the average Nigerian, are not the problem. We have a problem and we have to resolve it peacefully if we can. And ultimately, what we hope to achieve is um, a peaceful resolution and how we would have this referendum uh, national conference and how we'll have representation from um, all the enemy groups and we will all decide peacefully what we want. That is ultimately what we are calling for on the long term. 
a national conference. So uh, our conference on Sunday is a mini national conference where we have representations from every state in Nigeria, including Abuja, and then everyone can have their say. That's ultimately what we're hoping to achieve on the long term, that we can have a peaceful resolution to these problems. Because I am sure, sir, you and I, we have witnessed war, the albeit over the news in some countries. We would like to avoid such a situation in our country. That's the aim, sir. Um, one final question, um, or should I say perhaps a remark. Uh, one of my previous interviewees from Jigawa State, he referenced uh, something that you said, that Nigerians on average are selfish, which is the problem. And everyone would only think about their own personal gain first, about the interest of the nation. And uh, another interviewee from Borneo State said, all these people agitating for, for splits and divisions is because they're not benefiting from the government. That once the government chose them a few crumbs here and there, they would be silent. Do you think this is the case? No. Well, I would again speak for myself. People have accused me in the past that is because I wanted something from Buari, didn't give me that's that's so cheap. That blackmail is so cheap. If I wanted to have anything in government, I have enough contact, I have enough clout. I'll get whatever I want. Even if I want to be in government outside Nigeria, I have enough contact and enough friends who can give me that's that's if you look behind me, I'm a scholar. I came to Lagos out of joblessness to look for a job. I would have been a university teacher. That's my first law. As I'm speaking to you now, my biggest project, my dream now, I'm doing my library in Ibadan, a library resort. All I want to do is be able to produce books. I want nobody reads again. We must get serious. I don't need anything from government. That's why I can criticize government. Why did I follow Buari who claimed to be a pauper in 2014, 2015? where at the time PDP was spraying money everywhere. I followed the man who said he didn't have money. It's based on principle. And when I saw that he was misbehaving, I also left on principle. There was no fight between me and Buari. I just realized that, hey, the direction this man is going, if I follow him, all of us will end up in the same gutter. So I decided to face my business and leave him alone. If he fails, good luck to him. If he passes, good luck to him. But I have no doubt in my mind that the way he is going, and you can see even his own wife complains. So if people attack us, that is because I want something. If your own wife in the same house is saying, hey, bad people have taken over power, and nobody is listening to the woman. Even last week, I'm sure she still echoed it, saying bad people have taken over power in Nigeria. I don't know who they are. She probably knows them. But it tells you that the president should look inwards. We have the brains. So if Joe Biden is picking Nigerians to come and work for him in America, how come that the same Nigerians cannot function in their own country? And all you do is to blackmail us is because they want something. What do I want from government? What I'm wearing now? If I wear another cloth on top of it, they would think I'm in my business. I'm not going to sleep on two beds tonight, only one. Do you understand? So for me, I have chosen that I want to live my life in peace. Those who think at 80, they must be running a yo-yo around Abuja. That's their business. I see so many people, I wonder, you have been governor. If I was talking to some friends yesterday who had lunch, and I said, there was a governor who decamped recently from one party to another. I'm like, what else does he want? Why is he decamping? So at you and you are nearer seventy now. So why don't you find time to go back to your family, live with your children, your grandchildren, travel around the world? You've made money, you've made everything. I don't understand these people. People ask me, "Oh, are you not going to contest again?" No, I said I'm not going to become a serial contester. I'm just contesting for the fun of it when I know the result already. So I am telling you. Uh, this idea that if they give crumbs to some people, yes, it is true, if they give crumbs to some people, they will jump at it, but I'm not one of those people. Because he haven't lived 60 years of my life and I've survived thus far. I don't need anybody's crumbs. 
Thank you so much, Chief Dr. Daniel Mohamedou, for joining us. Thank you for your insights. And uh, we do hope that you will at least um, watch the Unity Conference on Sunday in... Is it virtual? ...streaming on, on Facebook. On, uh, we'll be on Zoom, we'll be on Instagram. And we have, as I said, representation from all the 36 states and the MCT and everyone explaining their own point of view as to the Nigerian problem and how we're going to solve it. And I'd just like to, to make a comment here. You said you look forward to your library, Badu. And uh, some of us are returnees. Um, you know, I came back to Nigeria as an adult. Also, we hope to make a change. However, um, conviction upon me is to forge the peace, as it were, bridge peace in our country so that we can stay here and we don't have to be refugees, so that we don't all have to carry our bags and run back to England. That's the hope of what we're trying to achieve. I yeah. hope that is communicated clearly. And just for the record, for those who are watching, the Unity Project Nigeria is independent. We're not a political group. We have no affiliations with any government. We are just Nigerians who want peace, who want what is best for every and average Nigerian. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, Thank you, Jennifer. I, I was going to ask about your mother when we started. You know, because a lot of people may not know your pedigree. Your mom was one of those who inspired us as young writers in those days when she had a column in, uh, in Vanguard. And uh, so I was going to ask how is she doing and all that. Uh, my mother, like a lot of people, have uh, resigned on Nigeria. Uh, mm. My mother does not visit Nigeria. If she comes on holiday, she prefers to go to Gambia or Jamaica. And I recall, um, I think it was about 10 years ago, she said she was going to buy a home in Jamaica instead of buying a home in Nigeria. So she has uh, abandoned Nigeria, same as my father. Those people do not interact or relate with Nigeria whatsoever. So I'd also like to point across that I'm not in Nigeria because I'm looking for crumbs. I'm here because I want to make a change. And I can very easily shake up my passport and run off. But we want peace. We want a place our children can come to. And we believe that if we don't act, posterity will ask us. Today you referenced Nelson Mandela. Uh, you referenced great leaders, people who stuck their neck out uh, for the benefit of of the of the masses for the greater good of their nation and that, that's what we're hoping to achieve awaken the national conscience awaken the average nigerian speak up stand for your rights otherwise you will continually be trampled upon and if you cannot even speak up for your rights support those people who are speaking up for your rights nigerians on average are not supportive of anyone who's trying to make a change and I'd like to reference Shomore uh, Two-Face uh, when he was uh, arrested. You know, a lot of Nigerians came out on social media and they cussed him out. We never want to support anybody. So how are we going to make a change? Well, it's a... It's it's a I, I hope you and I will have another opportunity. If we want this separation, we all must come out. For example, I interviewed uh, Otuma Gani Adams and he talks about the Yoruba nation. And when you speak to Ten Yoruba people, eight out of them says, who is that? You are idiots. Okay, but you are not happy with what the government is doing. Gary Adams is sticking out his neck saying he's going to do something, and you're not ready to support him. Same thing in the East, all over the country. I'm saying that Nigerians should know what they want. Nigerians should come out and speak for what they want. They should stand with what they want. That's the only way they're going to have a change, rather than grumbling quietly. That's the whole aim, sir. I agree with you. Uh, I have the same frustration. Some people will say, those who still believe in Nigeria will say, oh, the, the next president of Nigeria must come from Southwest. Must come. Then when you mention A, they will say it's a thief. You mention B, B they say it's a rogue. You mention uh, C, they, so who do you then want? You must agree on someone. And the earlier you do, the better. Because a presidential election it's not an overnight thing you can win. So it's frustrating. Trust me. Even those who say we want Nigeria to break up. Okay, what are the things you want to see in that new country? 
how do you arrive at that how new country? We, we, we can't agree. So, I don't know. That's why the enemies are laughing. Because the enemies know that a lot of us are not serious. The enemies know that a lot of us don't have the balls to even fight for our beliefs. Which is very unfortunate. But I wish you the best of luck. If you let me know the details of your conference, I will log in and I will try to broadcast for you. I mean, I'm a journalist to the core. I will still always do my job of reporting. You know, so I wish you the best of luck. It's been nice talking to you, Jennifer. Take care.